Welcome to another edition of Islanders Insider. I'm Stephen King. We come to you from the locker room once again today. We'll talk some Islanders women's and men's basketball, starting with men's in just a moment. We'll also have a feature on the upcoming season for Islanders softball. That's all coming your way here momentarily. We are going to talk some men's basketball with the head coach, Willis Wilson. How are you? I'm doing great. How are you, Steve? Well, really good. Almost as good as you. I don't think I can be as good as you. Two more wins on the road in South and Conference play. Uh, exciting. Strong trip through the state of Louisiana. Wins over McNeese State. The first ever win at McNeese State, by the way. And at Nichols. Um, I tell you, I mean, the McNeese game, in control early. Nichols, a little more back and forth and some come from behind late. So different types of games, but both were wins. Well, different types of games in different styles. McNeese is a team that really wants to run and get up and down the floor and uh, our guys found that to their liking. We were able to really get into a flow and use a lot of guys. Uh, the one thing that was impressive to me was just the, the amount of energy, the level of energy that we played with and the way we were able to maintain that uh, for the most part throughout the game. Well, you know, with McNeese, as you said, more of that up and down tempo. And that seemed to have worked for us as of late. We saw that against Northwestern State, you know. Uh, and some people might have thought at one point that we like to be that slow it down, use the clock team. But we just kind of go with what, what, what's working. And if the up tempo is working and we're getting the good shots, we've been able to capitalize. It's, it's been very impressive. Well, and a lot of that just is, is really kind of dependent upon our, our defense. Uh, yes. The fact that we were able to make so many hustle plays. When I think about that game, I think about Zane Knowles diving into the stands, uh, Rashawn Thomas with a couple of block shots, Jake Coher, it just seemed like every other play he was on his knees grabbing a loose ball, throwing it ahead for a teammate. And so uh, the defense has really made a, a big difference for us. And I, and I think it's given us a lot of confidence. You've heard me say this a number of times. When the defense is good, the offense tends to take care of itself. That was a particular game where I felt like our defense was where it needed to be. We did a really good job of defending a point of attack, did a good job of protecting inside out, and the rebounding was, was pretty, pretty uh, solid as well. One thing that I, I've been seeing from your team, and well, compared to last season, even earlier this season, the one word that really steps out for me is composure. That's the one thing I'm seeing from this team. They don't get rattled in the face of adversity. Even when we lost against SFA, they battled hard. They never broke down. Uh, they've been very composed, very mature. Well, if you back up from this point backward into the last two, two and a half weeks of last season, mm -hmm. we have played in so many close basketball games and so many games that, we, that we've that we won and then some that we haven't. And so I think our guys have developed a level of confidence and familiarity in these close games. Uh, we know how to execute. We know that execution is important at, at, uh, at the latter stages of the game and critical stages of the game. And then you got to you got to really point to the guard play. We've had really, really good guard play. I think John Jordan is controlling uh, the tempo of games and managing the game as well as he has at any point in his career. Hamid Ali has been fantastic. When you look at his uh, stats in season, he's aver or in conference, he's averaging or, or total 17 assists versus five turnovers. So he's really making a lot of positive plays for us. And then the contribution of the, the guys off the bench, uh, and I kind of include Brandon Pye in that mix as a bench guy, even though he's been a starter. Yeah, I was going to get into that's exactly what I was leading into. Well, when you, your bench has been when impressive. You, when you look at uh, what he and Jay Coher and and uh, Joy Williamson and a couple others, Cole Martinez, uh, those guys have really given us just incredibly solid play. Uh, I wouldn't say that the only thing that's been flashy has been their hustle. Uh, but they've been able to knock down open shots. They've been able to get deflections and create steals for their teammates. And uh, just really, really been Im impressed with the way they've played off the bench. Got to throw Rashawn Thomas in there on the to. front line as well. He's done a really, really nice job for us playing both at the center and the power four. And it just depends. Like On different nights, you get different things from them. Like Joy will give you points one night. Another game, he'll give you 11 boards, which he did the other night. And as you meant, Jake, the steals, the big shots, the the, the clutch shots when you had to have something. Uh, he, he's been exceptional. Um, it's it's a nice run, but truthfully, that I think that is such a big difference from previous teams that we've had is just this those first two, three guys off the bench, you know, aren't, aren't – giving better players breathers, they're bringing a whole new life to the floor. Yeah, and I'd say that that's a really good lead into the uh, to the Nickel State game because I, I just felt like we've got guys giving us what we need when we need it. Uh, some guys are giving the guys a, a break, but as you pointed out, the level of play is maintained or it even goes to a whole nother level. 
but some nights it's rebounding, some nights it's scoring, some nights it's uh, defense, some nights it's just an energy guy that's going to bring enthusiasm. When you go down the roster, we've got different guys giving us something different every night. Nobody's playing with an ego. Nobody's playing for themselves right now. They're really, really doing it in a team fashion, and that's that's fun to coach and it's fun to be a part of. Well, I listened to the games uh, here in Corpus while y'all were on the road, and and in the Nickel State game, there was an interesting situation with about eight minutes to go. There was a double technical called on the floor. Based upon the play-by-play, I know you weren't real thrilled about the double technical. That's fine and good. What was interesting is, again, going back to composure, the way those guys responded, all, all of a sudden your team took off. You made two plays immediately. A three-point shot by Martinez, then the steal, the putback, the steal, the, the bucket, and the free throw from Jake Corr right there. Before you know it, the game was tied. Yeah, and the interesting thing about that situation, I think it was really kind of twofold that benefited our team because, one, it gave our guys a chance to collect themselves and just think about what we had to do to win the game. It wasn't one of those situations where, okay, we're on the road and we're going to get screwed right now. It was more of a situation where, okay, we're on the road and this is what it's going to take to get it done. Let's lock down on defense. Let's tighten up our game on the offensive end and let's really play to win this game. And the contribution from a variety of guys at that point, I thought, really, really was uh, was something fun to watch. Well, I tell you, again, the team just continues to show this maturity and show this growth. It's been exciting to watch and just to, to, to see it develop. Now, you come back to the Dugan Wellness Center on Thursday. Coming back to campus, it's always fun playing in front of the, the campus crowd. Uh, it gets rather loud and rather exciting, and uh, we definitely feel we have an advantage playing here in the Dugan. But southeastern Louisiana comes to town. The first of two games, New Orleans on Saturday at the American Bank Center. But they seem to be two teams with kind of different styles. Southeastern, they love to shoot that ball. They shoot threes more than anybody in the league. New Orleans, not as much three-point shooting team, but they are very aggressive, especially on the boards. Yeah, and you know, I, I think that's just the nature of college basketball. You're going to get contrasting styles. Very seldom you have people that have the same uh, identical makeup in terms of personnel, and most coaches play to their own personal style and, and to that of their personnel. So uh, it will be uh, two games where we'll have to make some adjustments from game to game. But at the end of the day, what we're not having to make an adjustment is, uh, adjustments on are the way we want to do things, that inside, outside. Uh, sort of brand and style that we've developed. Uh, John has been doing a good job of pushing it, the ball. The guards have been doing a good job of taking care of it and getting it to the right spots. The, the post play inside out and the fact that the post guys have been a presence in every game, I think that's also been significant for us. And then the same can be said on the defensive side. You know, we're not a team that's taken a lot of threes, but uh, we've, we've been pretty, pretty consistent and pretty uh, – let me rephrase it. It's been an important aspect of what we do, and, and uh, you can just look as recent as the Nickel State game with a couple threes, one by Brandon Pye, one by uh, Cole Martinez. That were huge, huge shots for us. Well, I tell you one thing. It was an exciting road trip, two huge wins, five and one in conference play with two games at home this weekend. We just got to keep this train rolling, Coach. Well, and our goal is just to go out and do what we do every day. And if we do what we do every day and play to the best of our ability, we should have a chance every night. Absolutely. Coach, best of luck. Thank you. Willis Wilson joining us here in the locker room. Islanders Insider will come back in just a moment with a feature on the upcoming season for Islanders softball. More to come. Islanders Insider continues. For the remainder of the 2013-2014 season, Islanders basketball is offering a new friends and family four-pack promotion for Saturday games on Stripes Court at the American Bank Center. For just $44, fans get four sodas, four hot dogs, and four tickets to an Islanders men's and women's basketball doubleheader. This is the perfect opportunity to show your support for your hometown team in their pursuit of conference titles. That's four tickets to an Islanders basketball doubleheader, four hot dogs, and four sodas for only $44. Visit GoIslanders.com or call 825-BALL to purchase your friends and family four-pack today. That's 825-BALL. Go Islanders! Welcome back to Islanders Insider. At this time, we have a special feature brought to you by Teddy Medina, focusing on Islanders softball in their upcoming season. With their first week of practices in the books, Islanders softball is preparing for the start of their season. The players were ready to get back into the swing of things. Well, the first thing we did was a shuttle test. Um, we came out and passed that. Everybody did, so that was a good start. Um, after that, we came out and put in about three or four hours of work, um, both starting just from you know, throwing again, getting our arms loose, and also working on situations and stuff like that. Um, and then just getting our bats going again. So it's been good. Uh, with the addition of Coach Stein, we have some new drills going on. And uh, 
like with the hitting and everyone's doing well and we're coming back and we're ready to have a good season. It's been nice to get on the field and, and see what they can do and see what they bring to the table. And I, everything has been word of mouth right now and it's been good to see their work ethic and how they get after it and, and, and where they're going and or where they are and where they're going. And that's, I like being that, part of that process. They'll start the season off with their first month of play on the road, and they feel it gives them a unique opportunity to get their feet under them before heading home. Well, I think it's going to be awesome to open up conference play here, especially after being away all of February. Um, I think it's going to work more to our advantage to, you know, be away for so many games and then be able to play here in front of our own fans. It's going to be a lot, uh, especially as a freshman. I'm not really used to that, uh, missing classes and stuff, but... I'm definitely excited to, to go travel places and play different teams. Uh, we play some really cool teams from like all over, so that's exciting. Um, I don't know, just to make sure we get the job done and I don't know, not get caught up in like the traveling. But. With a number of fresh faces on the roster, the team thinks they'll be able to provide a spark on the pitching staff and in the lineup. Um, I think we've gelled really well with the seven newcomers. Um, at first, that you know, of course, they're a little shy, but everyone is and. Um, I think within the first couple of weeks, we really were um, able to get to know each other, and I think we uh, our personalities really fit, and they fit in really well. Um, we have two new pitchers this year, and I think they'll be really effective to our pitching staff. Um, as freshmen, they're both really great, and they're really strong, and I think that they can help us a lot this year. Um, as far as the newcomers meshing with the returners, it's been really, really good. Um, we didn't know how it would be, because at first they were really shy, and we're a big group, and once we get all together, we're kind of intimidating. Just everybody starts talking and it gets going. Um, but they jumped in real well, and uh, we're all gelling pretty well off the field. So bringing that onto the field is going to be what's going to take us to the next level too. The players all have specific goals in mind to help this team grow stronger and try to win a conference championship. I think I think it's just coming together as a team and and, and working towards a common goal. Whether you know if we work towards a common goal, every everyone wants to you know win a conference championship and give yourself a chance in the in the tournament. And I I think that's what uh, I think that's what we're working towards. That's you know if you set your if you set your goals low then you don't have something to shoot for and, and so as a staff and as a team I know we want to shoot for shoot for the limits and see where it's going to take us um, definitely to make the conference tournament last year we missed it um, the year before we got into and the year before that they actually won it so um, this being my senior year um, I would like to come out with a with a ring um, both winning the uh, regular season as well as the um, tournament for Honors Insider, I'm Teddy Medina. We'll be right back. It's the countdown to Katy. Southland Conference basketball teams are fighting for a chance to play in the Merrill Center. A league title and a bid to the big dance will be on the line. The action begins March 12th. Visit Southland.org slash Katie or Ticketmaster.com and start your countdown to Katie. Welcome back to Islanders Insider. This time let's talk some Islander women's hoops with the head coach of the women's program, Coach Roy Chadwick. How are you doing, sir? I'm good, Stephen. How are you? Doing okay. Doing okay. No, it was a tough week, though. That's for sure. I mean, a struggle in, on the road in the state of Louisiana, uh, McNeese and Nichols. It was, it was a tough go. Now, first... You know, we I guess we'll go chronologically talk about McNeese. Um, it was an interesting game because it just never got going. You never got a foothold in that game. McNeese got off early, made a lot of deep shots, and well, I mean, was it just excellent offensive execution on their end, or we did we have just defensive falters? Well, there were a lot of uh, extenuating factors. The the locker rooms at McNeese are side by side, and there's a vent that runs from their locker room to our locker room. And when you are in our locker room, if you're quiet, you can hear everything that's going on in their locker room. Um, their coach came in and said, hey, we're going to really, you know, go out and be extra physical with this team. They're a very soft team. Um, so when we got our girls in there, we basically said, hey, here's what they said. They said you were soft. Let's go out there and show them that we aren't. Um, and we proceeded to go out there and uh, show them that we were. And uh, we, were, we played soft, and they out physicaled us. Um, it was uh, a very, very tough night because I thought they got in our head because they were so physical, and we did not respond very well. So after the game, we talked about you know how you have to respond when somebody calls you out. 
Um, and I thought we did that against Nichols, but that was certainly a learning uh, lesson for us at McNeese. When somebody calls you out, maybe maybe not as far as someone like Richard Sherman took it <laughs> in that game, but but be willing to step up to challenges. Well, you you know, you're an athlete, you're a competitor, and when you get in a situation where you're going up against somebody that is equal to you, then you want to rise to the occasion, and you want to go out and you want to play the game without letting uh, comments and, and physical nature get into your mind. You want to play the game the way you're capable of playing it, and we didn't do that. We let that uh, thought process dictate the way we played. And, you know, there's the old sticks and stones thing. You, you, you cannot let words dictate the way you play. And we did that. And most teams, when you, you know, you get called out, would respond with, I'm going I'm to show you something. And we didn't do that. And, and that's very disheartening. But I think a lot of that is we got a lot of, um, uh, we, we lack a lot of basketball maturity with our team. And, and you know, that only comes with uh, getting it handed to you a time or two. And McNeese certainly handed it to us. So, when the game was over in our locker room, we invited them to come back down here and uh, we'll play them again and hopefully we'll see if we'll, we're soft the second time. So, um, you know, we'll, we'll uh, have an opportunity to right the ship and we just need to be ready to play. Well, I know, I know you talk about the youngsters and the freshmen. They're important cogs to make this happen, but still to make this turn, ultimately it starts with the upperclassmen though. Well, you're, you're right. You know, our senior class has got to got to do what uh, uh, you you need. You need the leadership up there, and you need it by example. And you know, investing with them about you know what's going on in the last five minutes of the game. And it was a deal of a coach were resorting to our old habits, and our old habits you know cost us games last year, time and time again. So we may be needing to close games with our youngsters and let them develop and, and uh, you know, let them uh, kind of find their way around. So uh, it's, it's a transitional time for us still. You know, we, we, we won some games, but we've lost some games because of our lack of uh, being able to overcome adversity. And, and that's just something that you learn over time. Well, speaking of your youngsters, one in particular, and we talk about it on a regular basis, Brittley Mamalu had a hot hand over that two-game stretch. There's no doubt hitting a 12 of 23s over that stretch period. Now, I understand that currently she's number 13 in the NCAA in May 3s. I mean, that's pretty impressive, pretty unbelievable. Well, you, uh, when you have a freshman, uh, what you want to do is get them ready for their future. Uh, she, every, you turn the corner to become a college player. Some people turn at the first month of school. Some people don't turn it till their junior or senior year. Uh, she came in and turned the corner as a college player and uh, is going to be big time, big time. So we, we've got we, we've got some talent there. Uh, Kamisha Davis is also another talented freshman. Cassie Jones, talented freshman. Doshi Davis, those, those girls are finding their way around and, and our future is very bright. But Brittany's starting to add to her game now. Now she's got a one dribble jumper that you know, she can shoot it from half court. And so, you know, when you add that in, she's going to be a legitimate Division One star. Well, there are 12 games to be played still. So there's lots of time to turn things around. There's no doubt. Um, what are the, are, are the top concerns for you X's and O's or are they mental and confidence and attitude, things like that? Well, I don't think we have any attitude situations. I think our, our biggest challenge is instilling the confidence in our players that we can do this because as we mentioned earlier our senior class when it gets on the line they start thinking oh no this is just you know what we've done i think uh, one of our seniors told me the other day she'd won 15 division one games in her career coming into this year so that's that's very difficult when you you know you've been out there you play 135 basketball games you know so uh, you're going to have opportunities uh, time and time again to show you can do it but they 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 got to get some confidence and got to win some games and and know that when the going gets tough I'm the girl you can count on. Coming home two games this week Southeast Louisiana and New Orleans you'll play at the Duke Wellness Center on Thursday back at the American Bank Center on Saturday. Now, both of these teams have not fared exceptionally well on the road this season. How crucial is it to for these two games to fall your way, uh, not only for positioning and conference play, but, like I said, the psyche, the well-being of the team? Well, we, we had fared very well at home. 
You know, I mean, so we're, we're both in the same boat. It's a uh, Southeastern, a very post-oriented team. Any team that's really been pounding it at us, we've really struggled with. So we've got our work cut out for us. But with that said, we're in the Dugan, where our fans make a huge difference. And our kids love to play in the Dugan. So we got to win the first one before we can win two. So we gotta, we, we've got to be ready. And, you know, hopefully our players are starting to get healthy again. And, you know, Brittany Bomalu went through a stretch where she was playing with a bad ankle. She's starting to get back to 100%. Um, we, we were without Shola for a couple of games, and now she's back. So hopefully we'll get on a roll here and, and do the things we need to do to position ourselves and go to Katie and, and make some noise. No doubt. Coach, I appreciate it. All right. Thank you, Stephen. When we come back to Islanders Insider, we'll bring you up to speed on what's next for Islanders Athletics. Stay with us. More Islanders Insider when we come back. What's Massage Envy Spa? For me, it's healthy. It's affordable. <sighs> I mean, he always wants... Pain relief. Right. And I want a healthier complexion. And now we can get a customized massage or a healthy skin facial... At a really good price. At a great price. <laughs> and nothing feels better than that. Customized massages and healthy skin facials, all at the perfect price. Start a healthy routine today with Massage Envy Spa. Go. You'll see. Welcome back once again to Islanders Insider. At this time, let's wrap things up by telling you what's up next for Islanders Athletics. Islanders men's and women's basketball continue with double header action on Thursday, January 23rd at the Dugan Wellness Center on the campus of Texas A&M University, Corpus Christi. They'll be taking on southeastern Louisiana, with the women taking the court at 5, the men at 7.30. It's a whiteout night with the first 200 fans receiving white t-shirts. Then on Saturday, January 25th, the Islanders will head back to the American Bank Center as they take on the University of New Orleans. Family four-pack night with four tickets, four hot dogs, and four drinks for $44. That doubleheader, 4 o'clock and 6.30. Then on Thursday, January 30th, they'll head back on the road to Huntsville, Texas, as the men and women will take on Sam Houston State. First game at 5.30, second at 7.45. And then on Saturday, February 1st, they'll travel to Beaumont, Texas, to take on the Lamar Cardinals. 4 o'clock for the women, 6.30 for the men. Honor Men's Tennis will continue their tough road swing through the state of New Mexico on Thursday, January 23rd as they travel to New Mexico State and Las Cruces. Match time, 2 o'clock. Then on Friday, January 24th, they'll stay in Las Cruces, but they'll take on Utah State. That match time also, 2 p.m. Then on Sunday, January 26th, they'll have their home opener at the Henry Tennis Center on the campus of Texas A&M University, Corpus Christi, as they take on the University of Maryland, Baltimore County. That match starts at 10 a.m. Then the women's team season opener will be that day as well as they take on UMBC also at 10 o'clock. An indoor track and field will continue on the road in Houston, Texas at the Howie Ryan Invitational. That's Friday, January 31st and Saturday, February 1st. As always, for all the latest on Islanders Athletics, you can always check in at www.goislanders.com or all Islanders social media. Once again, we want to thank Willis Wilson, head coach of Islander men's basketball, and Royce Chadwick, head coach of the women's program, along with Teddy Medina, bringing us our softball feature. And of course, we want to thank all of you for tuning in once again. I'm Stephen King, and this has been Islander's Insider.